All right, our new part seems to be fairly similar to our old part. This radius here seems to be the same. The bolt holes, the distance seems to be the same. The only difference I can really see is where the kill wire plugs in is on this side on this one. And it's on right up here on this one. I don't think that's going to make a darn bit of difference. There's plenty of wire to, you know, plug it in here rather than there. It shouldn't be any big deal. But what we do have to do is this... Uh, boot we have to change to the new spark plug wire and this boot we have to change to the new spark plug wire I got my uh, coil put back in here one screw there one screw there they have eight millimeter heads that's all there is to it then we plug the ignition wire back on like so that is the ignition kill wire there it just plugs right into that that tab right there which might be easier to do if I'm not holding the camera but I have got my coil installed now there are two bolts two little machine screws one there and one right there it's hard to see in the camera it's right there they are eight millimeter heads on them and uh, for the spark plug uh, boot I didn't really this thing came this coil came without a spark plug boot so and it was a right angle boot I changed it to straight on boot uh, because that's what I had laying around and now at least I have a, a boot I feel better you don't have to have a boot on old style uh, small engines in the old days didn't have boots on the spark plug wire it was very very common in fact that was usually the shut off device then there'd be a tab of steel that you'd touch I guess the spark plug to ground out the spark that's how you shut them off it's essentially doing the same thing as this kill switch wire in a more crude fashion it just grounds out the ignition but what you do is you set your uh, clearance here between the flywheel and those uh, whatever the pickup whatever you want to call it it's ten thousandth of an inch okay on the top and on the bottom there okay now if you don't have a feeler gauge I recommend you go buy one but if you don't have one I've noticed that uh, a sheet of regular old copier paper Fold in half will slide right in there, but three thicknesses won't. So I suppose for setting it, if you used like three thicknesses, uh, put that three thicknesses in first and then put your uh, coil on, that would work. But feeler gauges are cheap enough, okay? But that way you can get by. Okay, now that I got this at this point here, what I'm going to do just to see if we got it put together right, I'm going to put the oil bat filter back on and see if this thing will fire up. We don't need to have the shroud on it to test run it. All right, now I got this thing here just kind of mocked up. I put, I put a larger nut on that one uh, bolt to space it out so I can hold my throttle cable. I don't have an exhaust on this, so it's gonna be kind of loud, but we'll just see if, uh, see if this unit works now, okay? So we'll step on our gas. And she seems to work. Works in reverse, too. And it doesn't work when the key switch is turned off. So, everything seems to be fine. Now it's just a matter of putting this thing back together. And, uh, well, we know it runs. But with the old coil, it would stop running when it got hot. So I'm going to have to put this together and... Uh, Take her for a reasonably long ride here, just driving around, get it hot. And uh, if she doesn't kill then, we can call this job a success. Um, as far as difficulty, it was pretty easy once I know I was, knew what I was doing. And I hope that's where this video will help you folks. You know, you could do stuff like take this one piece of metal off right away so your flywheel shroud comes right off. And you can do things like just loosen up these bolts holding this piece of tin around the spark plug on. You don't have to actually take those all the way out. Uh, you can remove your oil filter right away and not have to worry about making a mess and very little oil comes out. And that will make this job much easier than it would be otherwise. Uh, one last thing too, it depends on the year of your golf cart. This here I believe is a 2002 model and uh, earlier models will have different engine cradles so and different engines so things might be a little bit different. But if you have a club car DS made in the 2000s, uh, this video ought to work pretty good for you. All right, sports fans, let's put this thing back together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put our flywheel shroud back on. And 
And we gotta make sure that this boot for the spark plug wire slips into this uh, notch in the engine cover. As noted before, we loosened up this piece of sheet metal that goes around the spark plug and the valve cover. So we can, because this piece of sheet metal, the entrance route has to slip underneath that piece of metal. There's also a little steel tab down here. Uh, it has to slip underneath that too. So just be aware of that because if you don't slip it underneath, it's, it's not going to go on the correct way. And by the way, there's also another piece of sheet metal right here. These are two separate pieces of sheet metal. As far as I can tell, it goes above one of them and below the other. It goes below this one that goes around the spark plug and the, and the valve cover. So it's, it's a little bit tricky getting everything lined up, just take your time. And if you monkey with it enough, eventually you get it right where it needs to be. Now we'll put in all of our little screws there to hold this thing on. Fortunately, these top ones are slotted. So this one here is right underneath the bracket for the starter generator. We didn't even have to remove that. We just loosened that. We actually wouldn't have needed to remove that one either. But I did. And uh, so it's just a matter of putting that, the machine screws back in. And there's six of them all together. Just get them started. We can tighten them all down when we're all done. I think I gotta take my oil filter off again to make putting these screws in a little bit easier. I had to put it back on my test ran it. Okay, so there's that. And I got a little bit more oil out to clean up here. Not too bad. There we go. Got three out of six started. Let's do another one. Here's one that goes right by the oil filter, and it is much easier to do if you have the oil filter removed, so I just can't recommend that enough. Oh. Oh. All right, sports fans, I'm going to show you a little trick here. I got one screw that's very difficult to... Uh, Install. I can't get my it's my two my fingers are too fat to do the job. So what we'll do is we'll take a piece of paper. In this case, paper, paper towel, piece of paper towel. Any kind of paper will do. Paper towel works pretty good. You put it over the head of the bolt, and then you stick the bolt in the socket, and that holds it on quite well. All right. Let me just show you what we're looking at here. There is a bolt right there. That's on the bottom of the engine shroud. Uh, about the seven o'clock position, okay, and it's just very difficult to get in there with your hand to start the the bolt, and uh, it's very difficult to try and just put, put the bolt in the socket because it'll just fall off. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go in with this setup. I made a piece of paper over the head of a bolt, and then you just ram it in the socket. That holds the bolt in. I should be able to get it started that way. All right, I was able to get that bolt in there. Uh, it's a little bit easier to see from the bottom of the cart. You can see right between the oil filter and the engine shroud. It's right there, right where my light's shining. Now you can get your fingers in there, but you just don't have any room to, you don't, so you, you don't have any manual dexterity. You can't uh, turn the uh, screw with your fingers. So the trick with uh, sticking the piece of paper on the socket and then sticking the bolt on the socket, that, that worked pretty good for starting it. So right now we have four out of six of those bolts started. We're going to have to use the exact same trick for this back bolt. And you see how not much nicer that is to access than it was when we were taking this machine apart because we took off this one piece of metal that goes right in that area. Only four bolts. It was well worth the time. So I'll stick a bolt on my socket with an extension with a piece of paper crammed between the bolt head and the socket. And let's see if I can get this. And we'll put it in that hole right there if you can see it way back there. There, now you got a pretty good view of that hole. It's got to go in that hole right there. 
All right, sports fans, in this particular case, it turns out I did have to use uh, uh, my trick where I drilled out that one bolt hole a little bit larger, um, stick the socket extension through, and then stick my socket, which I had the bolt with the piece of paper stuck in it, to hold that on. But that was about the only way I could get that one started. That's at about the 5 o'clock position on uh, engine fan shroud. Uh, so at this point, I believe we have five out of six of these bolts started. Okay, our six bolts is at about the 630 position on the uh, engine flywheel shroud. And to, to put that bolt in, we're going to do the same trick. We're going to use our trusty piece of paper over the head of the bolt, rammed onto a socket extension, and we should be able to get that started that way. One other trick I'm going to show you, if you had a situation where you need something that's not quite as rigid as a solid extension, but you need something that's a little bit less sloppy than a universal joint. If you take a universal joint and you wrap it with electrical tape, that'll kind of stiffen it up. So you'll kind of be halfway between a universal and a solid socket and might give you just the flex you need to start a bolt or screw or nut that's in a difficult position. So here I go. Let's see how it works. All right, finally. We got our six bolts in, but there's also one stud, and that goes right on the top of the engine. And the function of this is not only to hold the uh, flywheel shroud and that piece of sheet metal that goes around the spark plug and valve cover on, but it also was the mount for that piece of plastic that covers the throttle cable. Okay, so there's that stud in place there. I have to tighten up that. I also have to tighten up the six bolts that we just put in on this uh, flywheel shroud. And I also remember this, to tighten up the bolts, there's one there, one right there, and two in the center. I don't even think I can get the camera to show them. Let's see. Got the camera down here. I don't know if it's here going to be able to see them. But there's one right here where I'm feeling, and then there's one right there, okay? That's on the front of the motor just below this valve cover right here. Don't remember to tighten those up. Plus this one stud here that held that ground cable on, as well as the engine oil dipstick. So remember to tighten up all them screws. So what do you got? You got seven on the engine flywheel shroud, okay? If you wanna go six bolts in the stud here. On this piece of tin, that stud also holds it on. And then you got uh, one bolt there, and then you got two in the front plus this one up here. Remember to tighten up all your bolts. And the other thing too is when you remove your exhaust uh, system, make sure you don't lose your gasket. Here's our exhaust gasket. I'm just gonna slip it back on where it goes so I don't lose it. Our exhaust gasket goes right on like that. Okay, at this point, it's just a matter of me tightening down those bolts I mentioned and installing my exhaust. There might be one or two other things, but we're getting darn close to done here. All right, I got my six bolts that hold on that engine shroud, the flywheel shroud, whatever you want to call it, plus that one stud there. That's tightened up. I got my bolts that hold on this piece of sheet metal that uh, goes around the spark plug and the valve cover tightened up, in including the two that are underneath the valve cover there. And then there's one right there near the dipstick. And of course, uh, that one that we tightened up when we were tightening up the engine shroud. And I've come to notice that I, I think I have forgotten to tighten. I'll have to check that out. I'll have to make sure I tighten that. Very important that you tighten all your bolts. Make, have some way of keeping track of it. I mean, if nothing else, make your own video. Take a cell phone and your cell phone and uh, just record every bolt you take out. It'll make things a lot easier uh, for you to put things back together when, when the time comes. All right, I got that one bolt that I found when I checked everything to make sure I got everything. Got that all tightened up. And just remember to tighten up this one stud that has the ground wire on it and holds on your dipstick bracket. Tighten up the bottom bolt nut on it first, and then once that's tight, then tighten up the top nut that the, holds that ground wire on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on this uh, top cover that goes on the engine shroud, and that's held on with four uh, stove bolts that look like this. I changed my mind. Before I put on that uh, top cover, I am going to bolt this piece of sheet metal into place. Put this bracket in place here. It's just going to be easier to get to uh, without that uh, top shr uh, housing, shroud, bent, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to put on this with uh, four bolts. 
get that in place next. This is basically is the bracket that holds your muffler on. All right, I got that muffler bracket in place there. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put on my oil filter, and I'm going to put on this final cover here, and uh, that's held on with four machine screws with the Phillips head. Just a word of warning, you are going to need some tools to do this job. Just for example, just to take out and put on the screws that held this one cover on, I needed to use a regular screwdriver, a stubby screwdriver, a uh, what, a nut driver handle, whatever you want to call it, with a socket extension, with a quarter inch universal on it, with a quarter inch socket, and then a Phillips head screwdriver bit. And I taped that on there, and I taped up the universal so it wasn't so floppy. But that, that's, that's the tools I needed just to take off that cover, which is the pretty much the first and last part of this job, with the exception of put on it, putting on the muffler, which we're going to do next. All right, we're going to... Put our muffler on now. Make sure you have your uh, exhaust gasket in place on the exhaust port of the engine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, hose clamp on first on this muffler. And hopefully that'll work okay. And we'll just get it situated where it actually needs to be later. Now, that exhaust pipe there slants that way. So you kind of have to install your muffler up like that and then once you get it in there, rotate it down. You get her into place, and then we'll put it in to the exhaust uh, port of the motor. I'm going to have to remove this one uh, bolt that I put on here temporarily just to hold this throttle back bracket when I test or amp without the muffler. At this point, I'll attempt to slide the muffler into place. The end of it has to go into the exhaust port of the motor. Make sure your exhaust gasket is on. It is on. So we'll slide the pipe into the exhaust port and try to get the exhaust flange over the two studs. And then we'll just kind of wiggle around from there. There we go. That's all there is to that. And we'll start this one screw on here that held on this bracket. There we go. Got that started. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get that one uh, hose clamp in place that holds the muffler to that muffler bracket. I'm not really going to be able to video that, so just bear with me. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, sports fans, I got my nuts on my studs that hold my exhaust system on. I just have to tighten them up. I have the one bolt that holds that bracket for the exhaust pipe. Got the bolt going through that. And there is one thing. You do not have to put on that hose clamp on that muffler first before you uh, put it in place. You can easily slip it on where it goes after the muffler is in place. And I'll just show you where that is here. We're looking underneath the cart. Okay, there's your, there's your muffler. You can see the muffler, okay? And there's that hose clamp. Can you see the, see? And then you see right between the hose clamp and the muffler, there's that round saddle. Okay, you slip the, uh, Muffler clamp over that saddle and you just tighten her down. You probably want to have that uh, screw on the very top of the muffler, that worm drive screw. And just make sure it goes, the muffler clamp goes around that saddle that the muffler sits in. Tighten down that clamp and that's all there is to that. Alright, once you have the muffler all secured, the last thing you're going to want to do is put this piece of plastic over the throttle linkage. And that's secured by one nut that goes over that stud and two very small uh, Torx head screws and it takes a certain amount of finagling to get this uh, to slide underneath this throttle linkage. I'm not going to be able to do it and video it at the same time but you just mess with it and you'll get it on. Alright sports fans I'm pretty sure we're all done. We better be because I'm out of nuts and bolts so let's uh, turn this thing on and see if she fires up. Seems to be running good. What we will have to do now is we will have to put our seat on and take her for an extended drive and see if it still runs once the engine gets hot. If, I, if this thing can run continuously for 
half an hour or so, I'd say we have the problem fixed. I'm 90% confident that we have it fixed right now. But driving for about a half an hour, I'll be 100% confident we got this all taken care of. Oh yeah, how do you like my ignition switch way up here so you don't have to bend way down to turn the one on the dash? Now this key is really for nothing, but uh, I'll show you a video on how to do that later. Um, it might not seem like any big deal, but boy, when you're sitting there at the in the seat of these one of these golf carts and you're holding a beer, especially one in an open cup, it's kind of a pain in the butt to reach down and turn on the ignition switch. So I relocated mine on the steering column like a car it's much easier to get to and the other good thing about it is is I replaced replace the goofy can't find them anywhere club car keys with a nice normal garden tractor key so if I ever lose the key it's no big deal I can go to the hardware store and get one for a buck all right sports fans took this golf cart out and ran it for about a half an hour and ran the whole time Nothing bad happened, so I'm going to assume that uh, replacing the coil fixed this uh, machine. It wasn't too bad a job. Um, you know, I've watched some videos that said, uh, oh, you should remove the golf cart body and stuff. No, you don't have to do that. It was not that bad. You just take the seat off and, and remove the muffler. It really isn't too bad a job to do as long as you have some tools. So... If you liked what you saw in this video, I'd appreciate it if you liked, shared, subscribed, you know, do everything it takes to make this the number one channel on YouTube. And until next time, we'll see you here on the Fix Yourself channel.